Welcome to the knowledge series of IT Patshala. This tutorial video is the second part of documentation module. Our learners are advised to go through the first part of documentation module before proceeding with this video. In this video, we will discuss high-level and low-level design documents. Project Plan Documents Documents are very important part of software development. Therefore, when you are planning for architectural designing of the software, high-level design or HLD and low-level design or LLD documents come into picture. Where an HLD document gives a broad way of software and an LLD document gives minor details to the group in the production of software. In other words, HLD gives the overview of the complete system and LLD explains the details of each subsystems or modules. High-level design or HLD document it is a very important document for any software to be developed. It gives the complete overview of the system and tells everyone how the system will be divided into subsystems. It helps developer to understand the design of software and complete flow. Software Requirements Specification Software Requirements Specification or SRS is a comprehensive description of the intended purpose and environment for software. The SRS completely describes what the software will do and how it will be expected to perform. An SRS is basically an organization's understanding of a customer or potential client system requirements and dependencies at a particular point in time prior to any actual design or development work. It's a two-way policy that assures that both the client and the organization understand the each other's requirements. An SRS minimizes the time and effort required by developers to achieve desired goals and also minimizes the development cost. A good SRS defines how an application will interact with system hardware, other programs and human users in a wide variety of real-world situations. Parameters such as operating speed, response time, availability, portability, maintainability, footprint, security and speed of recovery from adverse events are evaluated. Minutes of Meeting Minutes of Meeting or MOM are the written or recorded documentation that is used to inform attendees and non-attendees of the happenings during the meeting. The minutes of meeting are generally taken or recorded during a meeting so that participants have a record of what happened during the meeting. Minutes of Meeting usually include the names of the participants, the agenda items covered, decisions made by the participants, the follow-up actions committed to by participants, due dates for the completion of commitments and any other events or discussions worth documenting for future review or history. Things to remember while taking minutes of meeting. Make sure that all of the essential elements are noted such as type of meeting, name of the organization, date and time, name of the facilitator, main topics and the time of adjournment. For formal and corporate meetings include approval of previous minutes and all resolutions. Prepare an outline based on the agenda ahead of time. By having the topics already written down, you can jump right on to a new topic without pause. Prepare a list of expected attendees and check off the names as people enter the room. Or you can pass around an attendance sheet for everyone to sign as the meeting starts. To be sure about who said what, make a map of the seating arrangement and make sure to ask for introduction of unfamiliar people. Do not make the mistake of recording every single comment but concentrate on getting the gist of the discussion and taking enough notes to summarize it later. Remember that minutes are the official record of what happened not what was said at a meeting. Use whatever device is comfortable for you, a notepad, a laptop computer or a mobile phone. Many people routinely record important meetings as a backup to their notes. Be prepared, study the issues to be discussed and ask a lot of questions ahead of time. If you have to fumble for understanding while you are making your notes, they won't make any sense to you later. Don't wait too long to type up the minutes and be sure to have them approved by the facilitator before distributing them to the attendees. Don't be intimidated. You may be called upon many times to take minutes of meetings and the ability to produce concise minutes is widely admired and valued. What is testing? Testing is the process of evaluating a system or its components with the intent to find whether it satisfies the specified requirements or not. This activity results in the difference between actual and expected results. In simple words, testing is executing a system in order to identify any gaps, errors or missing requirements contrary to the actual desire or requirement. 
Testing can also be defined as a process of analyzing a software product to detect the differences between existing and required conditions and to evaluate the features of the software item. Test Cases Test cases involve the set of steps, conditions and inputs which can be used while performing the testing tasks. The main intent of this activity is to ensure whether the software passes or fails in the terms of its functionality and other aspects. There are many types of test cases like functional, negative, error, logical test cases, physical test cases, UI test cases, etc. Furthermore, test cases are written to keep track of testing coverage of software. Generally, there is no formal template which is used during the test case writing. However, following are the main components which are always available and included in every test case. Test case ID, product module, product version, revision history, purpose, assumptions, preconditions, steps, expected outcome, actual outcome, post condition. Low level design or LLD document. Low level design documents are another important document types in project management. A low level design document gives the design of the actual program code which is designed based on high level design document. It defines internal logic of corresponding sub modules that designers prepare. A good low level design document makes the development very easy for developers with minimal efforts of debugging and testing. Functional requirements specification. In software development, functional requirements specification or FRS is a formal document used to describe a product's intended capabilities, appearance and interaction with users. The document typically outlines what is needed by the end user as well as the constraints, assumptions, technical requirements and requested properties of inputs and outputs. In a nutshell, it specifies what the finished product is expected to do and how a user will interact with it. FRS is read by business analysts, developers, project manager and testers. However, a functional requirement specification document does not define the inner workings of the proposed system. It does not include the specification of how the system functions will be implemented. Instead, it focuses on what various end users using the program might observe when interacting with the system. Elements of a functional requirements specification document. Cover page contains title, date and revision number. Summary of changes from previous revision in order to keep track what has been revised since the original document. Introduction brief description of the product being built or developed. Scope brief description of what is being designed and fabricated. Key assumptions, interfaces and constraints. List the assumptions that are made, relevant interfaces and constraints. Requirements. Provide a bulleted list of requirements or a table outlining the required technical parameters. References. Provide a brief list of reference documents that help better define or describe the component system. Database Schema Database Schema refers to the layout of the database which shows how data is organized into structures or tables. It is also referred to as the language used by database management systems. The schema in a relational database refers to the tables, fields and also the existing relationship between the fields and tables. Schemas are stored in a data dictionary and although in database language it is considered as the graphic model of a database. Simply put, it is the representation of the database. An example of database schema is the number of characters in a string for a field name or password. This includes the kind of characters allowed for the field name or password. It also talks about the relationship between the tables that are within a certain database. Query document. As the name of the document suggests, a query document is used to ask questions, inquire information or knowledge from the customers or clients. Many a times we are unclear or uncertain about the way forward on a project plan and then we seek further clarification. In such a scenario, normally you would seek help from your colleagues and get multiple answers, which then get mixed up and add up to the confusion. Instead of wasting time on checking with your colleagues on the project or task and reaching nowhere, you can compile all your doubts in an MS Word or similar software and send it to concerned authorities for clarification. Such a document is called a query document and information received against a query document is credible and can be shared with the whole team. Sample questions for a query document. How many things are displayed in package details? For example, 
package name, price, special offer, inclusion or exclusion, social share. After finding a package, can user buy a package? Is there any payment gateway integration? What are the inclusion or exclusion facilities in any holiday package? What is the color combination for the website? What are the required fields for inquiry form? User Manual the user manual is an essential document of the software engineering development process. This document describes how the end user will be able to use and interact with the software product being developed. A good user manual usually contains most or all of the following items. Introduction or overview. This initial part of the document provides a precise introduction to what the software is intended to accomplish and a little bit about how it does that. Functionalities. This is the main part of the manual where the various functionalities provided by the software are listed in an organized manner by topic, usually in a hierarchical fashion. Reference listing. This is an alphabetical listing of the software functionalities with a clear and concise description of their parameters and semantic. It differs from the functionality section in several aspects. The functionality section is meant to be read once more or less sequentially that flows well and is pleasing to read. The reference section is meant to be consulted every time the user needs to look up a particular functionality or function. The goal of the functionality section is to give the user a complete description of the software. The goal of this section is to succinctly provide the exact details of a particular functionality or function as needed. Error message. This section lists the possible errors and warning messages and their meaning in some order that makes it easy to locate them. If the user receives an error or warning message when running the software, this is the place to find out why. Glossary. All the key terms are listed in alphabetical order along with their definitions. These terms must have been used consistently throughout the user manual. Index. This is the usual index section found at the end of almost all manuals and textbooks. It provides a list of page numbers where important technical terms are used. It is customary to use bold face font for the most relevant pages, usually the one where the term is defined or discussed in detail. Documentation module of our knowledge series ends here. In this tutorial, we discussed about the high level and low level design document types, their usage and benefits. For more videos, please visit our library at www.ipparshala.com.